Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 vs 10 on Beshan Kovici and I'm going to be playing the new 715th Infantry Division. As you can see the game is underway and my Alf Kala are moving into position to provide me with some recon information but we're already under attack as my Luftwaffe Jäger are forced to unload in the face of stack counts. Got some grenadiers here, the disheartened grenadiers that the 715th can get. But it's really up to my Luftwaffe Jäger right now with their fanatical traits to try and take on these rifles that Taki has thrown straight towards us. I've got a couple of Marder 3s following up. They're going to be looking to get the kills onto the stag count, onto the Humbers here that are trying to put damage onto my infantry. Marder's going to be able to get a shot through. Misses the Humber Mark 3. I've also got an SDKZ71 sitting back here. If you're wondering what that is on the minimap, <laughs> I'll be bringing that up in due time. But I was, of course, focusing on the micro with the Marders. Moving them through the back gardens here is pretty important so they can back up into cover nice and quickly should they come under fire themselves. So far, so good. Humbers trying to do damage to the Luftwaffe Jäger. The Humbers have been buffed a little bit uh, in the latest patch. Those 15 mil guns that they have uh, can pin Luftwaffe Jäger, well, not specifically Luftwaffe Jäger, but infantry in general, uh, much quicker and they do a bit of extra damage now. But otherwise, Staghound here putting some shots towards the AS-42. I've got to try and get rid of that ASAP with the Marda 3. AS-42 20mm actually providing some 20mm fire there, which is going to be able to get the kill. Really, really nice indeed. And the great thing about these Marda 3s is whilst they do have a 76mm gun, they also have an MG-34. So they're able to pin down these units quite nicely. Ghost here trying to push up with the basics on the left-hand side, getting forced back due to them being disheartened. I've got more infantry on the way. I've got some Panzer Grenadiers. These are the 1941 variant of Panzer Grenadiers. You get 12 men in a squad with these Panzer Grenadiers, which is pretty cool. I've also got an Alfklader Panzer II on the way. Since a lot of our targets so far are light armor, like the Humber Mark III and the Stag Hounds, a Panzer II should do just fine. So that's what I was counting on. Although, of course, we do see some T-34 76s on the horizon now, as well as the M4A3105 from Ghost. 17 pounder sitting in the tree line further back is a little bit dodgy for my tanks coming across this bridge as it does have line of sight mostly down that road but fortunately the church blocks the bridge so just going to try and get into a better position now if i can get the marders into the back of these gardens then we can shoot down the road and i can also peek the t-34 76s so in this case actually taking up position next to the church because if I move forwards a little bit more there we'll find the gap between these buildings and be able to shoot those T-34s. Alfkala Panzer II trying its best to get itself killed as it just does a loop in front of the 17 pounder and eventually goes down. Panzer Grenz however are moving into position you can see there they do have that 12 strength really nice feature of the Panzergrenz in the 715th. Managing to get a shot in there with the Marta 3 onto the T-3476, so that was good. And now we're taking a shot towards the M4A3-105. M4 Got to be a bit careful because the 105 shell, if it hits, it will kill in one shot. Uh, the heat round has 10 damage, which is going to one shot pretty much any medium tank. But Marta now poking in and out of cover towards the T-34-76-1942s. These take a little while to aim, so I'm able to take advantage of that with my open top SPGs. Uh, the open top SPGs actually get an aim time bonus. They aim, I think it's like 0.5 seconds faster than normal tanks, so you can really take advantage of that by peeking in and out of cover. That's why things like NAS horns are so good in light cover. But one of the T-34-76-1942 is going down, very nice indeed. Now also managing to take out both the half-tracks before the rifles unload, uh, bringing them down to six men apiece. The Fafi Jäger still taking damage, but pinned down there, they're going to take less damage than normal, so just kind of absorbing fire whilst my Marder 3 continues the shot. I've also now got a Pack 38 joining us, and that's going to be sneaking through the back garden here, trying to get a shot onto the T-34, and bam, nicely done with the shot coming in from the Marder 3 plus the Pack 38 shot that makes short work of the T-34 and now we're going to be going for the engagement onto the Sherman 5. 
do have to be a bit careful of the uh, Strauki moving up on the right hand side but my Alfred is staying hidden for the time being which is good now artillery coming in and actually being the one to kill off my Marder 3 a little bit risky having my Marder 3 so close to the church because it does mean that my Alfred are getting targeted by that artillery as well or unintentionally hit by that artillery Sherman 5 pretty fast to aim itself manages to find the kill onto the Marder 3 and I did lose the pack so unfortunate series of events furthermore Baker's going to jump back his strongy DP and accidentally spot my Aftara so they're going to get surrendered and that's put us in a bit of an awkward situation because they're putting a lot of pressure onto this flag and we do not want to get pushed onto our side of the river because then the only way across for our vehicles is this tiny little bridge and that can be a problem so I'm bringing up some support weapons, Pack 38 moving up, IG-33 moving up, SDKFZ-71 finally on the move to the front line. But strap in guys because this is going to be a long one. I'll give you a chance to go grab <laughs> some popcorn and a drink and settle in as we continue this tense engagement for the town. So Panzergrenz and Grenz can still of course ford the river so they're going to be getting their rifles above their heads and moving across getting into those buildings and then we just gotta wait now for the pack 38 to try and clean up some of this armor and the IG-33 can help deal with the 17 pounder for example and some of this infantry although this infantry on the left it getting into the buildings here is unfortunate pack 38 taking shots towards the priest DD I'm hoping that I can take that out transmission damage first of all Shot does come in there, kills the 81mm mortar. But the Pack 38's done its job. And taking out those priest DDs is pretty important if I want to continue to use the Pack 38s to harass the tanks here. Two more Marda 3 is going to be on the way. The nice thing about these Marda 3 is they only cost 35 points apiece. Whereas things like the M4A3 here, 70 points, the M10 destroyer is going to be 80 points and these are all targets that the Marda 3s can quite easily kill and with that aim time bonus if I do use them in the back gardens of the buildings then you know it's going to end pretty well for us we're going to trade up very nicely Sherman 5 75 points for example now that Sherman 5 DD actually pretty scary in this situation because it can easily come across the river should they manage to take full control of the town but a good snipe there onto the m3 half track once again dealing some damage to the rifles before they unload ghost getting very aggressive with those half tracks maybe a little bit greedy there trying to get them into the buildings without unloading them m5 does try and shoot my martyr we managed to take it out now Sherman 5 DD on the left. Managed to find a spalling crit for the APCR. Really, really nice. Looking for another hit. Managed to get the transmission damage, but no kill. APCR rounds, they do less damage, so they only have three damage. Bear in mind a Sherman has 10 health, so it's gonna need four shots of APCR to kill a Sherman. And yeah, that's obviously a lot of time on target, which I didn't have there. But the spalling crit adds damage to a shot so it probably would have been three shots uh, for the kill there but Lufthansa Viega managing to get across the bridge and engaging these rifles early so two 15 man squads pretty scary for them to deal with also these Lufthansa Viega they don't have bad weapons it's four MP40s 10 SVTs and MG34 the SVTs are really what make these scary they're pretty accurate and can do a decent amount of damage over time. SBW204 going to be sacrificed but these T-34 is dangerously close to the Luftwaffe Jaeger. Marder 3 is going to take out the half track. Rifles early going to go down shortly but the big thing here is we've managed to get the AT grenades on target and take out a T-34-76 for free. Very very nice indeed. The great thing about me doing that with the Luftwaffe Jaeger as well is because they are fanatical they cannot be surrendered. So even though they're getting pinned right next to units on the front line, it doesn't matter. So now I've just got to keep bringing up reinforcements. We're slowly but surely taking back the town as Grimgai and Mosangu give me a hand here. Mosangu also using the 715th, so all of the units that he has are part of the same division that we are using. If you want to 
keep an eye on what the 715th has access to. The 715th, in my opinion, is actually one of the strongest divisions of this DLC. It's pretty fun to play as well. Minor 3 doing a good job there, taking out the M2A1. Now going to be looking for shots onto the T3476. You can see it will turn and it will aim really fast. Beautiful thing about these SPGs. Now got to reverse out of line of sight before the T-34 even manages to turn its turret. And easy peasy. Now we can just go back and try and do the same thing again. However, M10 <laughs> Destroyer comes in with the shot. Actually, it might have been the 17-pounder uh, or whatever this is back here. Oh, I wasn't M10 in the end. Uh, finding the crew kill does end up making that a sitting duck. Pack 38 wheeling itself across the bridge. <laughs> it's not often you manage to get a pack 38 wheeled across the bridge because that'd be quite vulnerable in that position. But either way, I'm going to move that up into the light cover surrounding the church and maybe I can pick off some of these M10 destroyers. New Panzergren on the way as well. Things in the game though, as you can see, currently still 12 to 12. Bashan Kovici is quite a balanced map and the flags are quite deep. And that does mean that these sort of stalemates can occur. But a really nice attempt by the opponent so far to try and get into this town early on. It is the way to do it if you want to do it. Because once this gets locked down, moving across the open here is going to be incredibly difficult. And you'd need a lot of smoke in order to make it over that open ground. But look at all of those wrecks of the enemy now. As the Pack 38 creates another in the form of an M10. Now we just got to look for a way to get an extra flag. We're finding the extra flag in the middle at the moment, which is giving us the 13 to 11 and starting to tick the tickets in our favor. Pack 38 now looking for the shots onto the Priest DD and my IG 33. Going to be looking for the kill onto the 17 pounder. Managed to find that as well. So we're starting to get a nice sequence of kills back in our favour, which is super important. Just got to make sure that I keep the Pack 38 out of line of sight of the M3 howitzer. And then we just need to double down on our defence here and then look for somewhere else to push. It's most likely going to be on this right hand side. But really nice shots coming through from the SU-152. Smashing stealth drones attack on that side. So we're going to have a lot of work to do if we want to find a flag. But so far on the left, Nathan actually making some good ground. The Panzer 38T of Shock moving up. I really like these Panzer 38Ts. They come with the Panzer Grenadier Gross Deutschland. And they provide very good mobility, decent firepower, and reasonable armor against AT weapons. So... When I say AT weapons, I mean specifically AT rifles. Pretty effective little machine. Sherman 5 is trying to back off, but with the transmission damage there, it's not going to get too far. Now we're trying to engage my pack 38. But the APCR finishing the job. Now we're going to be engaging that stag hound. Since it's further away, it's not going to be automatically firing APCR. But another free kill. For my pack 38 and the pack 38's severely doing a lot of damage to our opponents in the game so far been a massive massive help for me to stabilize our front just gonna try and keep moving it over so we can maybe get some shots onto ghosts m10s here this stroke dp does also need to be taken care of they are still sitting in this position you can see on the right hand side, flag's going to go back in favour of our opponents, and on the left, same there as well. So back to 12 to 12. Our team having the advantage in the centre with the town nearby these two flags, and their team having the advantage on this side due to the forest helping with those two flags. So just going to spread out my infantry. You can see my Panzergrens moving to the left. Le going to move over to the right hand side. But the Grenadiers currently actually doing a pretty good job of dealing with the Stroke DP. These being disheartened as well. 
doing surprisingly well, but the Stroker DP already a little bit pinned, which is reducing their accuracy quite significantly. But with the full pin there, it's going to be a surrender, and we've officially pushed the enemy out of the town. So now the elephant's coming in. <laughs> what I plan to do now is push on this right-hand side. I realize that this flag here could be the catalyst for us to win the game. We need 13 to 11 at least if we want to continue to count down the tickets of our opponents. And this is an easy one for us to capture as long as we hold the mid. So I'm bringing in the elephant on the right-hand side. And this is one of the awesome tools that the 715th gets. It's going to sit here and it's going to try and control the ranged engagement against all of these units. So the AVRE, the M10, the M4A3, the SU-152, all great targets for the Elephant. And the only thing that I've really got to be careful of is AT guns in these tree lines. So I'm going to have to make sure that I bring up some recon for it. But meanwhile, just some Panzergrenz getting into position to push across the open towards this flag whilst the elephant covers us. As long as the elephant has line of sight on to like the SU-152 here for example, then I should be okay. But in this case, the SU-152 finding the shot onto one of the gear zips before I unload. Forces me to unload the other two, but they are going to be in really bad positions as the elephant, not the fastest tank in the world, not going to be able to get that into position just yet. They are, of course, going to see the elephant coming, so you can see Ghost is now backing up. AVRE getting nowhere near close enough to put down its damage. But currently, things equaled out once again as we see a push coming into the mid, capturing that flag. On the left side, we're capturing that flag. So things actually equaling out once more as pressure shifts back and forth across this map. And this is the great thing about when you have a 10v10 that's relatively well balanced, you can see that a lot of the regulars on my t on my stream are actually on the other team to me. Uh, and then we have a bunch of people on, on my team as well. The Sebastian Shock regulars. Here comes some nasty artillery onto the town. But yeah, I'll just take the time, I guess, to plug my Twitch. If you guys want to come along for some Still Division action live, I do stream every Wednesday and Sunday Still Division 2 from 8pm GMT plus 1 so if you want to come get involved feel free I also stream on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and sometimes Saturdays I've got on the way to bring me some recon for the elephant I've got the STKZ71 sticking close as well to prevent any enemy rocket strikes IG-33 also being brought over. I picked up the one that was on the left here with the SDK of Z7 that it came in and I'm going to be shifting that up next to the Elephant to provide fire against enemy AT guns should we spot them with the Afghana. Now these Panzer guns going to be moving to the left side. I've got to try and keep the infantry push in line with the Elephant. If I do it like over on the right hand side as you saw here, they're going to be able to hide SU-122s very deep in cover that my elephant can't shoot at. So what I'm going to want to do is have my infantry actually just run in line with the elephant. So that all I need to do is just move a little closer if they sit deep in light cover here. Although technically an SU-122 could just sit here and force my elephant very close. Now, nice smoke here from our opponents, going to be blocking off the line of sight from my elephant, preventing me from shooting the kangaroos that are going to be running down the road. This is actually another new change that came in with the uh, Men of Steel DLC that some people might not know about. The Canadians were given a new unit, and that is the kangaroo rifles. But these kangaroos, they have kangaroo rifles in them. And the kangaroo rifles have the tank rider trait, and so do the kangaroo transports. So they take less suppression when they're nearby the kangaroos. In this case, all of the anti-tank shells coming through, absolutely obliterating <laughs> that convoy and forcing the kangaroo rifles to do a runner. 
A nice try. Av color, meanwhile, gonna be moving up here. Unfortunately shot at by a sniper at the moment, so I'm trying to get the IG to kill that off as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the shell of the IG misses just enough that it only does one damage and the Alf color goes down. So unfortunate because both the Alf color and the Jeep that they came in are now dead. Uh, some grenadiers now arriving. These are just disheartened infantry. Perfect for this sort of situation where I want to run across the open. Now I could, of course, you know, get some artillery, drop some smoke in front of my infantry here. But because I'm using an IG and an elephant, we don't really want to block the line of sight for those units as we push forwards with the grenadiers in front. But enemy artillery is going to be coming in. SU-152 managing to get the shot here onto the IG-33. Elephant does manage to return a shot but missed. So the SU-152 getting away with murder there. Or IG-33 didn't deserve that. But we managed to get one back with a kill onto the Stuttgart. And the push that tried to come into the town here has been prevented for the time being. New Alcala has arrived to provide myself with recon as we continue this infantry push across the open. I'm going to allow the Grenadiers to take the machine gun engagement at range because I have them on attack move orders. Mainly because the IG-33 was also su supposed to be supporting them, but with that gone, it does provide me with a little bit of an issue, especially since the SU-152 can just sneak forwards here and get shots onto these infantry without my elephant being in line of sight. But the elephant is finding line of sight onto other targets, and the Sherman 5 of the now AI Lycus going to be taken out. This elephant is actually getting low on HE. I've got to be really, really careful when it runs out of HE. Because if it doesn't have any HE ammo, it won't automatically face towards AT guns. And so side shots become much more of a possibility. So you'll see me have to like micro the front armor of that elephant a little bit more uh, once it runs out of HE entirely, which it now has. In order to replace the IG-33, I'm going to opt for the Sturmpanzer Stur-4312 with the 150mm HE rounds. I can blast this infantry just like the IG-33 can. Xylophone though, firing away. Looking for the kill onto the Vekotin. One thing that our opponent was doing here was he was trying to kill off the AA. But another xylophone actually getting taken out as the elephant of Masangu now moves into the town. Now this elephant of Masangu was actually really, really important in the town here because it allows us to cover off a massive part of this front line against enemy armor. Particularly in this sort of situation where ghost hellcats are trying to peek this corner to get APCR rounds into my elephant. This elephant, if it sits in the right position, can cover that angle. At the moment it currently isn't, so I'm a little bit worried about this elephant being hit by the Hellcats, but in the frontal armor the Hellcats won't stand a chance. So you can see a bounce there from the Hellcat, but artillery coming in as well. Elephant under a lot of pressure, but ends up missing that shot onto the Hellcat. One shot would be a kill for the elephant against the Hellcat those Hellcats do not want to play with fire too much but nice artillery comes in finally finishes off the SU-152 which is going to allow my infantry to continue their push once again. You can see I've also now brought up my own AS-42 20 mils. Very interesting looking car. Huge wheels. Has a Breda 20 that can be used as both anti-air and as ground fire support, providing me with radio and a recon for the elephant. And since my Alfkala has died once again, uh, the AS-42s are my primary source of recon at the moment, so I ideally want to be next to them so that they have the same sight range as the elephant and therefore we spot AT guns in good time. 
I still have the Kubel MG hanging about, so we are going to be moving that forwards to provide with me with some recon. The other thing is, if any AT guns do actually fire at this point, they're going to get spotted by the infantry. So the infantry can then open up with the machine guns, and it should be okay. More grenadiers going to be coming in. Disheartened grenadiers to support this push. We're looking to take this flag on the right hand side. Need to kind of le level things out once again as our opponents in the center. Yag pushing up onto this flag is causing a 13 11. Okay, my plan really is to just try and break through on this right hand side. One thing that the 715th does have is a bunch of Italian commandos. And the Decima, they can really just push through hard in light cover. So that's what, what I'm kind of counting on. I'm going to try and get nice and close here and make a blob of Decima that can push all the way through. Hellcat's not so lucky this time around as the elephant manages to hit its shot on target, looking for the second shot there. Unfortunately, missing. Hellcat's going to get away. So now we see the smoke coming in as the Borgvards arrive. Got to be a bit careful not to have my infantry too close to these Borgvards when they explode. Borgvards are remote detonation devices. And they are going to try and open up a way for us. Another nice addition in the 715th. There are other divisions already had access to Borgvards, like Panzalia. But Masangu demonstrating how to use them pretty well here as he detonates one on the right hand side he detonates one in the middle of the road before the AT gun can kill him and he's going to be trying to detonate one in light cover over here SDK of Z71 ends up being killed by a range marauder that was actually a good kill for us because it revealed the range marauder before I put anything uh, more valuable nearby uh, but this map, they managed to get through on this right hand side and off they go. Barrette is in hand. Absolutely terrifying loadout of seven Barrettes and the MG42. Another P47 rocket strike trying to come in onto my elephant. In this case, backed up by the AS42s and the Vekotins. That P47 not in a very good place, but it does manage to get out alive in this case. Oh no, never mind, it does go down. IL-2 now coming in as well from Tumpy. So, Decima pushing up on the right here. I've just got them on attack move orders straight through the forest. We want to try and breach to the other side so that we can capture another flag here. In the center we did manage to capture back this flag. And on the left hand side we're still holding there. So if we manage to grab another flag now we'll actually be on a 15-9 which would be huge. The Hellcats once again trying to peek the elephant. Not going to end well for them. As once again, the Hellcat goes down. But this time around, a loader knock is going to allow the Hellcat to get more shots on target. But penetration has got to be very, very low there. Decimap continuing their way forwards. Borgvard's trying to get up the road, does get taken out. And now I'm joining my Decimap with Decima Esperatori. And these Esperatori, these guys have bundle HE grenades. So more of a specialized close range variant I would definitely recommend using them as your close range infantry in this deck like eight Berettas plus a HE grenade like that is huge Dern Panzer getting really close here just gotta wait for my Decima to arrive the great thing about Berettas in light cover is you're generally gonna always be able to use the submachine guns because you can see the line of sight in light cover is usually at just over 150 so you can pretty much just run forwards a little bit and then the Berettas are on target and then you have absolutely insane firepower because these have 65% accuracy which is nuts. Okay, 17 pounder trying to have a go at the elephant. I'm going to be backing that up making sure that the front armor is facing as the MGs fire away and I'm looking to get the Sturmpanzer to fire position next to that. I had to zoom in like right next to it <laughs> in order to get the shot down. But AS 
F-42s, rushing them to the left side to make sure that we kill that off nice and quick. So here we go, Decima trying to kill off the Desants here and the Strazi, but the AVR really attacky, managing to get Spigot on target and absolutely demolishes my infantry squads on that side. But we have made some decent ground up the edge of the map there. That's good. Now I'm going to be bringing the elephant over as I do need to take care of these heavier units at close range. Decima. Not going to be able to deal with three vet separately very well because they don't have their own close range specialist anti infantry weapon. But at least they can chip them a bit with the Berettas before they die. These Decima, they should be retreating. Nice artillery round comes in there. Finish our, finishes off the Stone Panzer. Meanwhile, Taki has managed to get some kangaroos in on the left hand side, but I've got the Decima in position. And they're going to be able to engage the Strelzi LKM and the Kangaroo Rifles. Just look how much damage they deal. Even with the Kangaroos having their buff from the Tank Rider trait. They're having a real bad time there. Elephant looking for the shot down the main road onto the T-34-76 AS-42 staying close for AA purposes. And also, of course, we're helping out to kill the AT guns. Hellcat's now peeking though and looking for the kill onto the AS 20 mils, which is kind of difficult for me to deal with as the elephant isn't the most fast unit in the world. And so my AS 42 is getting picked off pretty much for free. And I'm really worried that the elephant's going to try and be side shot as well. So you can see I'm backing that up away from those Hellcats. A nice little peek there that time from the Hellcats. All well, the times they were just trying to shoot the, the elephant front on, not so good. But uh, with the AS-42s being taken out, that will leave them more vulnerable to the P-47 rocket strikes once again. There is, of course, still the Vicar 75 and the Vekot in here from Stealth Drone, so that's certainly helpful. But here we go, Elephant going to be engaging the T-34 and the Su-152 up the road. SU-152 trying to use its HE rounds, but the Elephant's crew unfazed. Over time, the SU-152 will do damage to the Elephant with those HE rounds. It just will take a decent number of shots. And we managed to get a hit there. Just got to find the next shot on target. And there we go. SU-152 goes down. Stormtroopers now moving through going to be putting a lot of hurt onto my Italian infantry. My Decima caught on reload with their HE, so not able to trade there and my infantry now surrendered. P-47 trying once again for the rocket strike onto the elephant. Not managing to find it just yet. AS-42 still alive and 3 vet due to the commander here. Uh, currently just moving on with the elephant staying line of sight down this road the road that Hon Beshan always turns into absolute carnage in a balance map a balance match I should say but a lot of our opponents have ended up uh, leaving or disconnecting from the game so it's getting to the point now where they're desperate to hold on on this right hand side with the remaining players in the game whilst the left side has now been secured and the middle is just turning into an absolute AI farm fest as they try and push onto that flag. So Decima now coming in more of those Esperatori and then I've also got a Pioneer Führer that's going to be providing the extra veterancy. M5 gun gets taken out nicely by the IG-33. Super important that this IG-33 is in position here Masangu was supporting this push really, really well, and I, I liked his play a lot with the uh, Borg Bards. E40. It's going to be another of the Italian units that the 715th gets access to. It's a medium tank. A little bit lighter armoured than some of the other units uh, that you can get. Because most of your tanks are Tigers, elephants, 
uh, and then otherwise it's like 20 mil vehicles. So the P40 is going to be like the lightest tank I believe that you can get access to. Even though technically I think the P40 for the Italians was classed as a heavy tank or something like that. <laughs> Even though it was like definitely a medium tank. Anyway, Elephant moving up. Looking to kill the AVRE. Got to be careful with the AVRE because it can, again, similar to the SU-152, deal quite a lot of damage with its HE round. Google finding a 45 on the left, which is absolutely fine. Is going to give my Decima a target there. Now, more Decima moving up on the right-hand side, and this time all three vet, thanks to the connection to the commander. That connection is definitely going to get spread out a little bit. But here we see the Decima getting the spot onto the AVRE. I'm going to be able to get a second shot off, though, with the Elephant at that close range. And the AVRE goes down. So, decent kill. Usually I wouldn't recommend having the Elephant so close to the front line. But in this case... It was worth it to kill the high armoured units. In this case, friendly off map end, ends up killing it <laughs> and got very low on health after being shot at by the AVRE. And the emergency off map that's been brought in here by Black Bear <laughs> ends up killing my poor elephant, <laughs> which was a sad time indeed. But these Decima absolutely crushing the infantry into the forest. One might say they are being decimated. I, I had to fit that one in there. Sorry, guys. I, I, I apologize. Um, look at them go, though. Almost taking on five squads on their own on the right-hand side. Now I've also got the Decima RDT coming in. And these guys, they not only have the Berettas they can use, but they can use Breders as well. And the Breders, they are move and shoot automatic rifles so they can fire within the 100 meter range with veterancy these things are absolutely brutal so now taking on guards we're taking on the desants these desima are still moving forwards getting more units off pioneer fielder manages to get its grenade off before going down a little bit unfortunate but the decima are dtr to that base so it's not the end of the world for me to lose them but you'll see me start to now utterly annihilate <laughs> loads of troops here I am forced to fall back because of artillery but otherwise you saw how quickly they can clean up the lower number of units stealth drone looks like unfortunately he dropped on the right hand side here so his units now are just going to be yoloing forwards which isn't so bad for us because it's going to give us sort of a screen of units to work with we're now sitting on the 15-9 across the board as Stahlbrecher has managed to get on top of this flag. We're still holding the flag in the centre. Left side. Lots of pressure being put on by Brut and Nathan. So, great job by our team across the board. Break the backs of our opponents as I continue to bring up more Decima Arditi and the Panzer Gundfjörder. And we try and finish off the game. Moving the SDK of Z71 up, the AS42 on the way up as well. Just admire the destruction a little bit more here. Up the road, the couple of Borgvards. I think realistically those Borgvards would not look that good as wrecks after they detonate. But there we go. Maybe the Borgvard should be like the only unit in the game that doesn't leave behind a wreck when it dies. Because <laughs> it would be obliterated. P40s, not going to last against T3485. The Pendragon Führer arriving to provide me with extra veterancy. Uh, the KM Führer from Black Bear providing veterancy to the Grenz and Decima moving through here. SDKs of server 1 needs to be careful not to be shot at by the Firefly and the T-34. Panzer 2 now on the way to help in light cover. Uh, my Tiger on this side. I could have probably moved that out actually to help deal 
with this firefly on the flank there but the BT-42 engaging that at range with its HE will eventually kill it over time. Never underestimate how effective HE rounds can be because you can see this firefly is pretty damaged. So another couple shots from that BT-42 and it will end up getting the kill. So one more might do the trick. We'll have to wait and see. Not quite. Firefly manages to get the shot on target in time. Yeah, that was getting very, very low on health. Now more off-map being brought up by our teammates as the infantry engagements continue. My Decima Espedatori here actually end up running out of ammo entirely, <laughs> which is something you really don't see very often in infantry, especially in a 10v10. Not really worth me reloading them, so allow them to go down. And here we go. Another large push of infantry being moved through on the right-hand side. Tiger finally making an appearance for me. Would be very useful for engaging things at close range. Poor Panzer II all in a pretty bad spot there. <laughs> Does go down. But now 16 to 8 across the board as this flag is also taken on the left hand side. They're continuing to try and get up on this right hand side. Apparently 6 minutes left on the clock. Tiger engaging T-34s and staghounds on this main road. Just trying to hold back the tide of AI. Brevet Jagdkamp versus Guards. Jagdkamp should win that. Sepedi, though, winning their individual engagement. You can see here I'm spreading my RDT, <laughs> Decima RDT, around the off map that's about to come down. Now it does, of course have quite a large suppression radius on the 194 mils uh, off map so got to be a bit careful there as long as I keep them in cover there's not really much threat of us being surrendered I was hoping that my AS-42 might be able to kill off the T-34s but the off map didn't pin them entirely so not this time around anyway Tiger E Führer now coming up Look at all that smoke on the horizon. All the destroyed units across the front here. All these T-34s up in flames, the kangaroos. Another one going down. Beautiful stuff. Tiger. Now in line of sight. And looking for the kill. On to the T-34. And just to find one. Looking now for the second. Meanwhile, Sepedi, guards, going to be able to take out the RDT. But now I'm going to rush back towards them. And we're going to see a final hurrah of the Decima. As we just run through the enemy. Artillery commander dead takes away the veterancy from the other units. That means the guards are going to be taking even more damage now. This Abagier. These have TNT, so I've got to be a little bit careful. These Esperatori finding the transport snipes here. Look how much damage these guards are going to take. I'm going to pull back as well, allowing the TNT to go off and help pin down some of these units. Unfortunately, a little bit outnumbered. Just a tad. Hands are going to be really not equipped for that kind of engagement, but you can just see how effective these have the potential to be. That was five squads, severely outmanned. And still doing a fantastic job there. Borgvard though. Huge Borgvard kills. <laughs> on to those guards as Masangu once again. Using smoke to get the Borgvards up nice and close. 
really, really nice play. This is a perfect example of how you use Borg Bards. Get the smoke down, rush the Borg Bards through the smoke, and then try and find the kills. So it's going to be able to explode that next to all of these tanks. That's going to really, really damage them. The second Borgvad might be able to get the kill because of that. That Tiger coming up to clean up. Should that not work? And then, of course, just need to bring in more infantry, continue the forest engagements. BT 42s at close range. Make sure to turn off the HE shells and use the flame shells first if you're this close, because the flame shells. They are so good. They are so, so good. But the Borgvard certainly did its job. Clean that out nicely. Now all of these guards in a pretty bad spot. My AS-20 melt. Going to be engaging them. The Tigers firing away with their machine guns as well. Bombing strikes coming in there from the DO-217s. Another of the uh, bombers that you can get in the uh, 715th. Yeah, all the guards wiped out very quickly by the 20 mils. So one minute left on the clock. Three minutes left in total on the... <laughs> and what turned out to be a pretty awesome game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Decima finishing off the Savage on the right hand side unfortunately paying for that with a HE satchel to the face but hopefully you guys got a good sort of look and feel of how the 715th works of course at this point a lot of the enemy team is AI so we're just kind of cleaning house but Tiger's breaking through here Piet coming in from the Kangaroo rifles was hoping to get away from that, but the Tiger E Fuela pays the price <laughs> right at the end. And seconds left on the clock. My infantry not going to be arriving. But, uh, yeah, just blitzing across the open now against all the AI. And that is GG. There you have it the 715th Infantry. 48 minutes, 3 seconds on Beshan Kovici. 2,965 kills to 2,000 losses in the end. Obviously, we were losing quite a lot of units <laughs> in this game, uh, especially after the amount of pressure that came into the town early on. And then when we're trying to push our way through the forest on the right-hand side, there's a lot of attrition involved there. Uh, but Shock here with an amazing KD. 4,040 kills, 850 losses. Good job to him. And Sebastian with the 2,860 kills, the 190 losses. Very nicely done. Uh, bar to three, really, really paying off early on. Those were fantastic for me. Uh, bear in mind, they only cost 35 points. So killing a couple half tracks and a tank is more than enough to pay themselves off. Pack 38s saved my bacon hardcore. The elephant did extremely well for me, uh, pushing all the way up there into the tree line eventually and getting killed off. Very sadly, by friendly off map. But check out those Decima Esperatori. Those were the ones that went through and used up their ammo, I'm pretty sure. The Agostino. Yeah. These can be incredibly strong. These are the recon ones. Definitely make good use of those if you plan to use this division. But that is it for now. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.